It was funny when they were, when Scott's group was designing the uh, skeleton portion in the computer, you know, now the way things are done, you design it and sculpt it on, on the computer and then that can be, that file can be sent to a three-dimensional printer that just like flat copy prints a dimensional bone structure on the interior. So if you think back to the original Lincoln when welders and machinists would bolt it together kind of like a mechanical man, you had straps of metal and all that. That's all gone, and inside that is, uh, uh, you know, pieces of structure and bone, and that, that resemble, you know, almost a cyber reality too. So it's, it's kind of a bold new. That's why we can get this uh, when you when you see this. Maybe you can pay attention to this, that we can talk more about it afterwards. But you can get that sense of how it's really there's muscles, muscles, and a kind of organic structure moving inside the head. And that's that's how we do that. And that frankly, just you know, in the, what. what what the Imagineers did in the early 60s was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what they would think if they saw this now. And then, of course, we at Disney, I think everything we do, going back to you know Walt's era, but uh, for me, like I remember Indiana Jones, those, those ride vehicles are the most complicated things we had ever done. And then we splattered them all up with mud so they looked like they're about to fall apart. Uh, in this show, we really want you to be thinking about what he has to say and the inspirational moments that are not just in the figure, but in the, the story that you'll hear today, too. And uh, that was what I think began the whole drive to do something wonderful sure. and be proud here of what we have at Disney. If we've done our job properly, all that technology should be this invisible. Yeah. So. So. <laughs> um, so, if, if it's okay with you, we can open up to a couple sure. questions. If any of you have any questions that haven't been answered yet, right away, a hand right there in the back. I'm curious as to whether or not any of the internal mechanics are still on Mer's design. Um, in the, uh, the short answer is yes. Um, we haven't we haven't reinvented every single piece of this figure. Uh, as you know, we really focused on the parts where where, where guests focus, which is largely the head. So there are still absolutely some pieces of, of Bob's uh, original design. In fact, we we were talking to Bob not too long ago about uh, about the original design, and uh, it was really fun to to kind of compare the the process uh, of what we're doing now, which is largely computer based. You know, we start with that computer allows us to do a whole bunch of stuff those guys could couldn't have done in the early '60s, um, and compare it with the process, which was which was. Um, Still very, very a craftsman-like process, but using a very different tool set. Great, thank you. Anybody else have any questions that they'd like to answer before we head into the theater? Yes? What do you anticipate being able to do with storytelling going into the future with this new technology that you wouldn't be able to do or be able to do as well with the previous generation of audio animatronics? Well, if you think of, you know, I think the Johnny Depp figure we did is an extraordinary example of the old technology. But he has to perform without too much emotion, you know, it's just sort of a flat performance. And the more character you get, say, if we were doing Country Bear Jamboree today, basically it's just a frozen face that's you know, mouthing or miming. Uh, what we're excited about, and again, you know, in the range of Mr. Lincoln here, it's subtlety. You know, so it'll, we'll probably start to see uh, the uh, nuances when people start doing their HD stuff in there, <laughs> and then it comes up on YouTube. But you know, we know it's there. We know the capabilities this gives us. So to add emotion to performance is a huge thing. I mean, for an actor not to be able to emote, and where we've been able to compensate for that in the past is a, a great uh, animator like Mark Davis, who worked you know here at Disneyland for. Uh, the, the golden years, Mark would do staging in which the storytelling was so obvious in the way it was staged that he didn't, he knew he wouldn't be able to rely too much on changing expressions and so forth like that, that uh, you'd get it down pat in that, the way that the characters work together, just looking at it would tell the story. And it isn't that we'd abandon that, but you know, to be able to add then the depth of being able to actually reform and go from, you're not going to see this, but when we were playing with this, we had Lincoln, you know, after he did his little speech, kind of cracking up and doing a full range of like, how they do? That was pretty good, you know? And uh, <laughs> it was absolutely fascinating, but there's no way we can use that in this show. Oh, come on. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this show is not, uh, this show is, you know, again, it's about, we're really trying to, to deliver a message and, a, and a, an understanding of what, of, of Lincoln's situation and what he was going through, which at the time was a pretty, 
you know, dire, tense situation and stuff. This isn't. You You'll know. see the emotion, that, that heart, that uh, warmth, you know, it's, it's there in the face, which it, it wasn't really there before. It was so we, we can do more than the, 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 the technology can emote in a, in a wider range than what we're going to see today. I mean, we could talk for uh, you know, hours about the work that we're doing in advance, you know, at Imagineering we're never done innovating. That's, you know, it's a constant process for us. So um, the work we're doing in dimensional animation, the auto animatronics, our new Automatronics, which are uh, dimensional figures that are aware and reactive um, in uh, new ways of, of freeing them so they can become mobile. And that they can um, recognize the audience. They can recognize the audience. They can so I'm going to hit him up to fix Indy at the end of the Indy run. <laughs> I hope you like the one we did at the start of the Indy run. We're going to do the one at the end of the Indy run. We, we could talk for hours about yeah. all that. And, and you know, I would just say stay tuned because we are absolutely not ever pausing in our relentless pursuit, finding new and, and more compelling ways to bring our characters and stories to life. Great. Do you have any questions up front? Do we have one in back again? One yeah, other quick two. question. I'm sure this conversation has come up somewhere in Imagineering. Will we ever see an animatronic figure of Walt? Yeah, it's come up uh, since, the, you, know, the, you probably remember there was once a Walt Disney story here. Uh, the Disney family uh, really is guarded about Walt's image and uh, how he's used. And Walt himself went on record saying, when you know I'm no longer part of Disneyland, I, the last thing I want is a statue or anything. And we had to think long and hard about doing partners up in the hub uh, because Walt felt you were here for today. And the stories he created and the stories that we created after that is why guests come here to have fun. And so he didn't really want it to become you know a shrine to Walt. So we kind of tried to honor that, but you know, like everyone else, would it make a great biofilm? Absolutely. Would it make a terrific exhibit? Yes, it would. But you know, it was both his integrity, and I know I've talked with Diane, and uh, she's created now the Disney Family Museum up in San Francisco to handle the perspective of Walt Disney, the man from the family, from the daughter, and so forth. So. We, we want to respect that, and I think as long as Diane has that angle on it, we would try to keep the spirit of Walt as you pass through the Disneyland gallery out there. Uh, you see the creations and the inspiration that Walt had for creating Disneyland, but uh, I think we'll try to stay away from it. We have one more, one last question here before we hit it. Uh, just quickly going back to something you mentioned in the last response about uh, the creative limitations of the technology in the past. As technology has become more and more advanced, some of these limitations have been taken away. Do you foresee a time when all of these creative limitations are removed and the only boundary truly will be uh, your imagination, uh, which, which uh, Ray Bradbury says is something that's unbounded? Yeah, we certainly hope so. You know, I mean, our, our recent our recent experience is that as we as problems and limitations fall away, um, expectations and opportunities rush to meet it. So we are constantly um, um, pushing the envelope of what is possible to do, what is possible to do well. Um, so we have not yet gotten to the point where 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 we where where, where truly anything is possible. Um, but we are continuing to push against that. Some time in the future, really what we, we, we focus on is telling the best stories that we can. Yeah. The technology really is in support of the story. And I believe today we have the means to tell any story we want to. How we choose to tell it, might, we, may make, we might make choices based on technology or based on approach or based on how we want that, the authorship of that story to come across or the relationship between the audience and the, and the storyteller. But I believe today the important piece, the storytelling, we really truly are and have been for, for, for a long time, only limited by our imagination. I would just put a footnote on that, that I think limitations sometimes are your best ally. Um, I wouldn't want to get to a point where like, computer-generated imagery has become almost so out there that you know people are forgetting that just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should do it. And that if there isn't a good story to drive the use of it forward, then you know it's for naught. So I think it's applying things in the right way, uh, which is, a, you know, like I said, it's an exercise in subtlety. You know, and that's what we hope we have for you inside.